This is Denmark Street in London. It's always been the stomping ground of world famous bands. It's here they do their rehearsals, buy their guitars and gaze into half empty glasses. And it's here in 2002 that an unknown band pitched up to play a gig that they thought was going to be their last. The band was keen and on the set list a song that was to change their lives forever. I walked across an empty land. I knew the pathway like the back of my hand. So you're about to play this venue in 2002. Set the scene for me. And we'd had a pretty tough year actually because we thought we were about to get a record deal. And then when that fell through, we really plummeted to kind of losing hope, I suppose. We were pretty much at a sort of our lowest ebb then. And I remember being so having a conversation with Tom, where I was sort of pretty much on the verge of giving up. I think yeah. the final straw for me was when I walked into the kitchen in this place we were living. It was so horrible. And then I just saw a rat just kind of <laughs> ran out onto the kitchen work surface. I thought, what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> this is really miserable. <laughs> They'd known each other since childhood, and after years of trying to get a record deal, the band were about to quit. But their luck was about to change. A record executive was in the audience. We did our, our thing on the tiny stage <laughs> here, and, uh, and yeah, I remember afterwards he came up and just said, you know, he'd, he'd love to put out a single for us. A simple thing, where have you gone? Among the songs that got Keane noticed that night was one they'd always felt was rather special. I'd written this new song and felt like a kind of hip single. Was a, I think it was the first time I remember us thinking, actually, that, that really sounds like something you'd hear on the radio. The only idea I had when I sat down at the piano was to try and do something that had a kind of driving rhythm, like Heroes by David Bowie. Mm -hmm. That was my kind of reference yeah. point, um, you know, which is a sort of... So I just started off with these kind of pounding chords and it gradually got slower and slower and then it ended up as this sort of... And I had this song that was really not very good. <laughs> it was called Stowaway. And it was a bit of a dirge. That to was be a good song. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's one for well, the next album. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a bit. It was a bit miserable, you know. And it was all about, you know, we were feeling very sort of cold and isolated. But the only sort of nice bit about this song, positive bit, was this phrase. Um, so where don't we go? Somewhere only we know. And I thought, I wonder if I could take that sort of one decent bit of that song and slot it into this new song, which we're all excited about. And it fitted. So where don't we go? Somewhere Where is that somewhere for you? For me personally, it'd probably be Battle, um, which is a little town where we all grew up and used to hang out. Really, the last thing that happened in Battle before we were making music was 1066, <laughs> Battle of Hastings. <laughs> <laughs> it felt like that, though. It was so sleepy. I have my own place just outside Battle. It was kind of almost a secret path. And then it would lead out to a little wall that overlooked this lovely kind of sweeping countryside. I'm always immediately transported back to that place whenever I sing the song. I suppose the idea of the song really is that it's not necessarily a physical place but you know getting back to friendship and, and those things that you can rely on. I'm getting on something to rely on. So it's not a love song, it's more about, about us as friends I think really. 13 million records later and somewhere only we know is a festival standard. It's just a wonderful feeling of that many people all in one place singing something that is really uh, personal to us. Keen are more used to playing stadium gigs now, but the story of this song leads back to this little place and the band's enduring friendship. Oh, thank you. Pink. We love that song. That's yeah. going to be in we our minds. We were swaying, weren't we, in the like studio? Yeah. You were enjoying that, weren't I you, Daniel? I was enjoying that as well, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, what was your reaction to the news that J.K. Rowling might be uh, writing another Harry Potter sequel? Um, another, well, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a sequel or prequel or what it could be described as. I know very little about it, yeah. so I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I can't give more.